industry do you think is going to produce the next Bill Gates? Because that's the industry I want to get a job in. <laughs> Industries do have different paces of innovation, and so the IT industry, driven by the magic of software, the magic of the optic fiber, the magic of the chip, which doubles in power every couple of years, it's been the industry that has not only been the most exciting, it's also changed the rules for many other industries. You know, the idea of uh, information being available, what the online world is like, that's incredible. I'd say there are a few other industries that will compete for being exciting in the decades ahead. The energy business, uh, some approach uh, will provide cheaper energy that's environmentally friendly. And there's a lot of science, a lot of business. That's a global thing. Be some great careers there. So what is energy deregulation? The electric and gas power industry has been a monopoly for a long, long time until deregulation laws in the U.S. were enacted in the 90s. The average consumer isn't aware of this, and that's where the Energy Freedom Project comes in. Each month, when you pay your electric or gas bill, you get to turn on a light so you can see, turn on a stove so you can eat, or take a hot shower so you're clean. At work or at home, we all have these basic needs that require energy. So long as we pay the price, our local utility tells us. Up to this point, you have not had a choice. Not if you want a charged cell phone, or clean clothes, or a warm shower. So far, around 15 states have experienced energy deregulation. And that means consumers in these states have the power to choose their energy supplier and the power to save money. Because when there's a choice in a deregulated free market, everybody wins. Let's explain the concept more by going back in time and looking at deregulation in American history and how it has benefited the public. In the 70s, the airline industry held a monopoly on passenger fares, schedules, and routes. The U.S. government deregulated the airline industry and passenger fares eased and schedules and routes were expanded, a win for consumers. How about telephone deregulation in the 80s? Government enacted legislation that made it so you could choose your long distance provider and local service carrier. Choice in phone service providers drove down costs, a win for consumers. With energy deregulation, choice in electric and gas providers has also driven down the cost of what people are paying for their power. People can finally choose where their energy comes from and how the energy was produced. And Pico customers can now start to do their homework to save money come January. And joining us now to sort it all out is PUC Commissioner Robert Paulson. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Don, pleasure to be with you this evening. Pico has announced its price to compare. What exactly does that mean for consumers who are shopping for electricity? Because it's kind of confusing, I think, to people. It is. And, and what, what it basically means is on January 1, if you're a Pico customer and you do not pick an alternative generation supplier, the default generation rate will be 9.92 cents. Pico does not care. Pico does not care. Pico does not care where you pick your generation supplier. It's simply a pass through on the bill right now, or excuse me, on January 1. So the lights and the reliability, nothing's going to change. My belief that anybody in the state of Maryland and Washington, D.C., who's not with a third party provider, is throwing away money. And when you're using thousands of kilowatt hours, it does add up. 1.4 times 1,200, that's roughly $17 for that particular month. Your utility company will continue to service your lines, read your meter, and bill you. You'll still get their charges for distribution and taxes. It's the only thing that will change is lowering your cost of the kilowatt hours, lowering your cost of electricity. The power to deal is in your hands. Mm -hmm.